Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Philanthropone, and I'm back with another video here, this time to go over some of the VR highlights for this year's E3 of 2018. There were quite a lot of announcements this year, and it looks like there will be a bright future for VR games by the time 2019 rolls around. And I will note that I did not include every single VR announcement in this video for this year's E3, but decided to pick the ones that interested me the most and were most newsworthy in my opinion. So let's take a look at some of the announcements. First up, we have Wolfenstein Cyber Pilot, which was announced at Bethesda's E3 2018 press conference. Using mechanical beasts to tamp down the last flicker of liberty. But we are strong. The game takes place 20 years after the events of Wolfenstein II, The New Colossus, and has you fighting against Nazis in Paris, where you play as a hacker who uses a Nazi's own machines to fight against them. I personally was never into the Wolfenstein series, and I actually heard a report that the demo of the game at E3 was quote unquote boring, but at least it isn't on rails. The game is set to launch in 2019 on the PSVR and HTC Vive. So the next one isn't really news, but more like lack of news, where Xbox did not make any official announcement about bringing VR to the Xbox One X, which was a disappointment to a lot of people, but not entirely surprising either, since Xbox announced in 2016 that they were bringing VR to the Xbox One X, but later had to retract that statement, indicating that they were not going to do so because they want it to be a wireless experience, and that there was a roadblock in being able to do that with the Xbox One X. So while it is disappointing, it wasn't, you know, it was kind of expected. Up next, we have another Bethesda published game that is getting VR components, and that game is Prey, where its Moon Crash DLC will have two modes that will be VR capable in a future multiplayer update called Typhon Hunter. And here is how Bethesda describes Typhon Hunter on Prey's Steam page. It will be a tense game of hide and seek between a single survivor and five other players who stalk, hunt, and hide in plain sight as mimics. The Typhon Hunter update is expected to release later this summer on all platforms, and the other mode that will also be available is a solo escape the room type of experience called Transstar VR. And if all of those names and descriptions seem kind of confusing. Just to recap, Moon Crash is a DLC that is already out now for $19.99, but the multiplayer VR update is coming at a later date this summer and will be free as part of the Moon Crash DLC. And Bethesda wasn't done there. They also announced a game called Elder Scrolls Blades that will be playable on pretty much anything and everything from smartphones all the way up to high-end VR. Blades, at its heart, is a pure Elder Scrolls game. A massive first-person RPG with console-quality graphics, but with a uniquely mobile experience. Believe me when I say you have to see this running on an iPhone 10, this gigantic screen, does not do it justice. The game reportedly has procedurally generated dungeons with melee and ranged combat, as well as spell casting. And what cracked me up the most with this one was that it is cross-platform, where smartphone players will be able to go up against VR players. Like, how can that be fair? I don't know. Anyways, the game can be played in portrait or landscape mode on a phone, and is set to launch this fall for free on iOS and Android, but we don't really know when it will launch on other platforms quite yet. Alright, and another game that was announced at E3 2018 was Transference, which will be a psychological thriller made by Ubisoft and SpectreVision, who Elijah Wood represented during Ubisoft's keynote. In Transference, with Transference, we're bringing a... No. With Transference, we're bringing a first-person <laughs> exploration game into a chilling new dimension. You apparently play in first-person where you find clues, solve puzzles, and change perspectives between different family members to piece together the mystery surrounding the game. And all you have to do is just... just be. I know things haven't been so great lately, okay? Something I do. Been. I've been a lousy father, huh? I'm unable. 
A description of the game during its trailer goes as such. Plunge into the experiment of a troubled scientist, a corrupted digital simulation of his family formed using their collective brain data. Shift between the three perspectives of a family and unravel the mystery hiding in this mind-bending psychological thriller. The experience is due to launch sometime in the fall on the PSVR, HTC Vive, Oculus Rift, PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. The latter ones mean that the game can be experienced in non-VR. Next on the list is Stormland by Insomniac Games. Stormland is an open world game where you are free to explore anywhere you want with no limitations via flying or gliding. There will be a single player campaign as well as multiplayer to explore with friends. Not a whole lot is known about the game yet, but Oculus gave us some insight in one of their blog posts where they said, You're a peaceful gardener until the tempest shatters your android body. After lying dormant for centuries, you must journey through an ever-changing cloudscape, augmenting yourself to become a heroic fighter, save your friends, and reclaim your world. At this point, it looks like the game is going to be an Oculus exclusive, unfortunately, so Vive players will have to resort to using Revive to play. Alright, and the next and last game I decided to include in this video was Creed Rise to Glory because I'm a boxing fan and it is a game that is being made by Servios. I never know if I'm pronouncing those devs' name right, Servios, but basically the same people who brought us the critically acclaimed Sprint Vector and Raw Data. And this game has been known of for a while now, but it did get a new trailer at E3. The game makes use of something called Phantom Melee technology that will keep you immersed in the action as it appears to go for a more cinematic style of gameplay. And for me, when it comes to VR sports games, I prefer more of a realistic simulator type of experience as much as possible, but given the dev's track record, I will definitely be checking this one out. Alright, and there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and let me know in the comments what games jumped out at you the most at this year's E3. I'd love to hear. I have a feeling that some people are going to call me out saying you forgot about this game or that game, but like I said, these are the picks that interested me the most. So that's all. Thank you so much once again for watching. Until next time, peace.